network operations uh, is uh, it's a simple kind of two word kind of thing but the whole of google actually relies on this so we built a pretty large network and uh, people might think okay you might be just using search so you need just the data centers and uh, you might be just requiring some compute capacity but network as such is uh, one of the fundamental building blocks of entire google so the way we operate matters a lot so all the way from uh, whether you take uh, the interconnectivity of data centers or even bringing in the traffic right so how do you really optimize your network and scale at the same time so if you really look at uh, the the locations where we have the presence of data centers it is pretty spread out across the globe and not only that uh, we are actually scaling that to much larger extent with the requirement from cloud so the, the, with the cloud the whole game changes and uh, so you need to have better sla it's not about just your services or your apps but it also about how fast you can service and secondly how secure you can service so we are building our network and having the presence of cloud pretty much everywhere in the world so as as we see the need and the traffic patterns we actually built so why we do this because our network itself we kind of built pretty large but just imagine the amount of uh, capacity we actually increase day to day so it is actually increasing 10x so if you look from data center perspective itself it is pretty pretty large but on top of that we are actually increasing uh, at the rate of 10x and uh, the campus where you have multiple uh, fabrics within the uh, a campus so they are all interconnected so the capacity between that campus network also actually is increasing every day and uh, so once we do this then uh, there is something called uh, the the interconnectivity of data centers right so we need to optimize where our services are going to be located at and we cannot just put all services in one location and say hey this one big honking network with a big data center can just support everything so we need to distribute that so the complexity here is that we cannot just bring down certain network just to expand our network so that means we need to scale while it is functioning and while it is servicing and at the rate of 10x that means we have to really optimize how we actually operate so even a simple policy change could affect entire network right so that means we are going to block traffic we are going to drop tra traffic or we may not even be able to recover from the state where it might it might have moved to so this thing you might have seen uh, in earlier presentations or different conferences um, so we are pretty much 100% uh, sdn eyes network so we manage every area of the network with software so if i'm here that doesn't mean that the network growth or operations are not happening they're all automated so how we can what the fundamental block or the building block for this is the sdn so we have uh, if you look at uh, the various components the three fundamental components are the data center the interconnectivity of data centers and uh, the van which is the egress right then the fourth fourth one which is uh, <clears throat> the uh, virtual network where you really need to actually could build your customer networks on your existing infrastructure so all four are actually sdnized so we have different uh, controller domains and we have different controllers managing each of that so that means our operations will have to make sure that each of these domains not only function well but could actually coexist and work harmoniously so this these are the fundamental four blocks um, which actually 
helps us, uh, you know, network. So now, if, uh, if you really look at a uh, lot of things, right? So all the way from scalability, because we can always think that scale is fundamental thing. And uh, as a customer, you will see, I need very good performance. So we can say that performance has to be at the highest uh, whatever requirement we have to provide or to service the customers, right? So that means we can always put those at the topmost and say that let's work towards that. But really looking at the network, that may not be possible because if we just target just the performance and the scale, we will miss out on how to actually manage the network, how to operate the network. So if you really look at it, the, the pyramid is actually the base where we have is the availability. So availability is the fundamental thing we actually enforce in every aspect of our network operations. So then we actually go up, up the ladder, whether it is manageability or velocity or scale or performance. So you might think that, okay, if you put availability as the fundamental thing, how do you really scale it at a larger capacity or multiple times of your existing capacity? So that is where the, the engineering part comes. How do you really manage and operate? How do you define your operations? And how do you really scale your operations? So as I mentioned, uh, the traffic, it not only just coming in and going out, we actually manage in such a way that it has to be uh, sent to different uh, data centers and depending on the SLA, depending on the, the RTTs and depending on the SLOs, we actually need to manage our traffic effectively. So in order to do that, it's not about purely the network layer. We need to uh, manage at the service layer. So if you have listened to the earlier keynote, you might have understood where we are coming from. And the, the virtual network, which is uh, one of the offerings we actually provide to customers is uh, you could actually build your own network within the GCP, which is the Google Cloud Platform. So although we have the very good infrastructure which is manageable, but when it comes to the customer network, the, the ball game actually is different. Now we need to really make sure the virtual network, what we offer, is actually uh, making use of whatever we are trying to build underneath, how effectively we are actually managing that. All those things should percolate up to the virtual network as well. So, but if it is pretty static and which is not making use of the, the dynamics of the underlay, it is not going to be really helpful. So, and uh, the, the Andromeda, which we call as the, uh, the virtual network, which is the critical, uh, which plays a critical role in offering cloud services. Now, so because I talked about cloud, what does it mean uh, where we are and uh, how we are doing uh, in terms of cloud offerings? So if you really look at the cloud or if you've gone to a lot of cloud conferences, you might be hearing a lot about how we can uh, save on the CapEx, how to virtualize, okay, NFE is your answer, and we, how we could do that. So if you put all those things, that is, yeah, that is the, the migration towards cloud, we could term it as cloud 1.0, right? So what is cloud 2.0? So cloud 2.0 is now most of the cloud service providers are actually moving towards so is that how do I optimize my network? How do I load balance my uh, compute? How do I load balance my network? And how do I actually provide better services, whether it is database or whether it is query tools, all sorts of things. So that is happening now. But if you just stop at now, we may not be able to really innovate towards the future. So cloud 3.0 is something which we are targeting and we are actually trying to emphasize on. The cloud 3.0 is pretty much like taking all the way from the infrastructure level, how do we really have uh, the compute distributed or disaggregated? How do we have the memory disaggregated? How do we have the network disaggregated as well? So. It is not like one location, one place, or one geographic area, but rather it is pretty much like transparent to your services. So service is the key, and underlying infrastructure is pretty much transparent to you, or to the user, or even to the application. So we build the infrastructure such a way that the services shouldn't or doesn't have to worry about any of the infrastructure changes or how the infrastructure is architected. So that is the third way of uh, third wave or 
the, the Cloud 3.0 requirements, where we are targeting and where we are trying to uh, move towards to. So this slide uh, is pretty interesting. So most of you might have had this, uh, the, the assistant, where you could say that, hey, Google do this or Google search me this. But how do you, how can you apply to networks? You could say that, hey, I want to just build this network from A to B, right? So that is a fundamental premise of where we are targeting. In other words, you should be able to say that this is what I wanted to do in terms of building my network. How do I get there, right? How do I get there shouldn't be the problem of the operator. It should be the problem of your software and the automation, which should do it for you without you actually jumping into the mix. So that is where we are actually targeting, uh, and that's what this slides. So don't expect just buying a Google Home. You can actually use that to build your network. So, so this is where people talk about, which is the ZTN, uh, the Zero Touch Network. So this is one of the key aspects to network operations. And if you have listened to one of my colleagues talk yesterday, um, we are pretty much doing uh, this as the uh, foundation for any of our automation or any of our operations. So what does it mean? So first, you need to have uh, an intent, right? So if you don't have an intent, then first we need to fix that. But you need to have the intent, how do you get uh, to move to a state from state A to state B, or from capacity to cap capacity A to capacity B. How do you do that? So when you have this intent, you define that intent, and this intent shouldn't be too granular in nature, but rather it should be very high level, which is abstract. And that intent has to percolate to creation of like what exactly the workflow or what exactly the automation it should actually generate. From there, you need to have a good model representation, right? So in order to represent the model, you need to have a model first of your network. Let's take simple network. You need to have your network model, right? So once you model the network, then you can actually go from model A to model B. So there should be building blocks for the model. So you, everything has to be modeled, right? Um, once you have this modeled, then next, comes like, okay, I can modify from this graph to the other graph, right? So cool, that is good. But how does now the model translates to the actual network and the configuration, for example, translates to the, the next step, right? So that is where the building block of like, how does the translation happens? What is the mode of pushing configs? What is the mode of getting the telemetry data out of uh, the devices. So you need to have the fundamental blocks. So in order to do that, so you need to come up with good set of tools, or good set of infrastructures. So all the way from transport or representation or moving data from A to B or from NMS to the device. So you need to have good, very minimalistic approach towards that. So, so we outsource, uh, not outsource, I'm sorry, we open sourced uh, a lot of things like gRPC, which is our fundamental transport protocol which we use. Anyone can actually use it, and most of the vendors actually uh, deploy, uh, have that in their devices. Uh, then we have the, the model representation uh, for the network, for example, open config. Uh, so that is also pretty much open, and the models are out there, so anyone can use it, and most of the vendors actually implement that. So, we have a lot of things which, uh, as Tim was mentioning earlier, that open source is the key. And we actually, primary driving factor towards that. So we actually open source so many things, like all the way from uh, the transport, gRPC, quick, or those kind of things. So we have a lot of things open source, and please try out uh, when uh, you get a chance. So once we do this, uh, so we have these four components, and uh, so there are fundamental things where I would like to touch, which is the telemetry aspect and uh, the intelligence. So I'll just briefly touch about this. Uh, of course, you know the challenges. Uh, so where we are moving towards to, or where the industry is moving towards to, to better put. So everyone talks about network intelligence or AI kind of thing. So what does it mean in your networks, right? So if you talk about, uh, if you heard the previous presentation, so 
once you have the data, you need to know how to make use of the data, right? So you can get the whatever data you want or how much ever data you want, but how do you really represent the data to uh, make it useful for the operations or for the user, right? So in the simple case, uh, unfortunately this is animated, but PDF doesn't do that. So if you throw the data, you should be able to figure out whether it is a dog or whether it is a cat, right? So you, have, you build the model and you throw the data at that and it should generate saying that this is what it is, right? So what is the fundamental component in there? So that means you need to have large sets of data because the data has to be iterated and modeled. Then you need to have a good model representation. Of course, in order to do that, you need to have a lot of compute, right? Because it's not one time deal where you generate the model and you're gonna be done with that. So we have evolved this in our pretty much all of, almost all of our apps, uh, which are service offerings. And uh, so all of these things we offer as uh, the infrastructure also as a service offering as part of uh, the ML offering through GCP. So any service you want to run, any of offering you want to provide your customers through GCP can actually avail all of these uh, tools, whether it is uh, ML specific thing or non ML specific thing. So you have one stop shop, you can actually do that. So the reason why I'm saying that is uh, this brings, because we have l compute, we have good network and we have good memory. So we have all those three fundamental building blocks to provide you any of this compute and the machine learning offering. So we should be able to do that. So now you ask, okay, what exactly I need to do this, right? So TensorFlow, which is also again open source. So this is one of the fundamental thing where we have opened it up and it is now community driven and uh, you can actually use this open uh, TensorFlow on your local system or on GCP or wherever you like. And actually you can throw all your data, right? You can model, create your own models and you can actually iterate and you can actually use it to generate your own machine intelligence uh, for your own networks or for your own services. So now, what are the challenges? I'm sorry, I'm a little bit over time, but I'll just take a few minutes. Uh, so what exactly are the challenges in this, in the case of networks, right? So network data is pretty sparse. So there is no one event, for example, which correlates with other event. All events could be totally unique, and the data sets associated with those things could be unique as well. So this creates a lot of complexity. It's not about like, okay, I want to just uh, take specific thing and just use it. So this brings to the table where the data set is quite large and you really, really need a lot of data, right? So once you really need the data, now you need to really uh, uh, use that, right? So especially when you're dynamically changing your network, then your data much more compounds exponentially. So this actually brings a challenge, right? So how do we really correlate this uh, to my operations, right? So when you're designing your operations, make sure you actually uh, create the data in such a way that you should be able to use it, right? Just having the data doesn't mean anything, right? So first, you need to make sure what your problems are and how you're going to address that, right? And all the way from the infrastructure level, you need to get the data. So if you really want to use that, you need to make sure how do you build an effective model. So once you have that good model, uh, which is iterative by the way, uh, so you cannot uh, just say that I will run once a month or once a year. So pretty much you need to run every day, fine tune your tensors in such a way that you actually completely like revisit the model pretty much every day, right? So that whenever you get new sets of data, you throw at the model, you should be able to figure that out. And that is what we do for our operations as well. And that is the key to progress towards large scale networks. And how do you actually manage those networks as well? I think I ran out of time. I'm sorry, I, I had to run quickly because uh, it is flagging me big time. Okay, um, great job, thank you. Thank you very much, Sam. Yeah. Thank you for